he pointed at this one and said, oh, this is the NVIDIA GeForce 1080 Ti of the bike world. And I was mm-hmm. like, ah, yes, it all makes sense now. Like, that's <laughs> that was very helpful. Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on The Nexus. I'm your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be joined by Brandon Johnson so we can talk about the specialized Cirrus. Cirrus? Cirrus? I'm actually not sure how it's pronounced. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I you put your name for your bike in here. I named mine Seriously, like like seriously. It's, it's <laughs> Cirrus L-Y. Yeah, I, but we can call it however we want. We I think we should pronounce it a different way each time and, and never acknowledge it again. I, I realized after like several months of owning this bike that I had been thinking about it like the cloud, like the Cirrus cloud, but that's per, that's spelled different. With a C, but I think it's also like the cloud too. That right. would be, yeah, and, that, and then like like Sirius, S-I-R-I-U-S is like a star, right? Uh-huh. Or like a, yeah. like a constellation. Or like a radio station. Or yeah, 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 that too. Anyway, before we get into the the review itself, uh, if you want to see the show notes for this episode with you know links to whatever we're talking about, uh, those those can be found at thenexus.tv/so116. All right, so the high level stuff. Um, so the the specialized Cirrus, it's a high hybrid bike. Um, which means that it's, you know, the, the geometry of the frame is kind of more of a road bike, um, but then it's got, like, flat flat handlebars similar to a mountain bike. Um, they've got a wide range of builds for this, for this family of bikes, uh, ranging all the way from $650 to $2,600, um, at least according to their website currently. I bought mine back in summer 2018. I named it Joy because uh, the first time that I took it out for like a little test ride around the the parking lot, uh, I was just like, wow, th- like this experience brings me so much more joy than like hoofing around on a mountain bike, you know, while I'm just like commuting to work. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely a good name for that one. Um, so yeah, I had it from summer of 2018 to spring of 2020. Uh, and I, I don't, I don't know if like that exact configuration is one of the ones that's on the website, but it seems like it's pretty similar to the Cirrus 3.0 that they have on their website right now, mm-hmm. um, which is a thousand dollars. Um, so that one, that build is an uh, aluminum frame, uh, with a carbon fiber fork. Uh, it's got hydraulic disc brakes. Um, it's got a two by nine drive chain. And the uh, the the sales guy at Bicycle Chain, when he found out that I'm a computer tech teacher and I and that I know nothing about bikes and you know needed help finding what I wanted, he pointed at this one and said, "Oh, this is the Nvidia GeForce 1080 Ti of the bike world." And I was mm-hmm. like, "Ah, yes, it all makes sense now. Like that's <laughs> that was very helpful." <laughs> that's great. Um, yeah, shout out to shout out to the Bicycle Chain in Roseville. Um, good good folks there yeah yeah it's a good good shop um right next to right across the street from an aldi now oh wow that's right Mm -hmm. oh my goodness i totally forgot about that um huh so i have actually totally um you know i I don't remember what i had to bring it in for but um there was at least once where i brought it in and they were like oh this is going to take us like 30 45 minutes and i was like cool i'll go across the street and do some grocery shopping and then i'll come back (laughs) And it was great for me. I think I, when I took mine in at one point, cause I discovered the bicycle chain, like much later on, I think probably like five years after I, after I got my serious, mm-hmm. um, I was having a lot of trouble finding a good specialized shop in Minneapolis and downtown Minneapolis. Um, you know, Eric's is usually pretty reliable, but I was looking for something that had a shop on site and didn't have to like ship it out to it. Ah, yeah, like a, a main repair center. Um, and um, yeah, anyway, I think I did that same thing, but I think I ended up hanging out at like Keys or something for a little bit. Um, Th- that makes sense as well. No, that was it. The Dairy Queen. I went to the Dairy Queen <laughs> in the parking lot and I was like, I haven't been to a Dairy Queen in a billion years. This is great. I had a peanut buster parfait like it's the 1940s. I, I had mine for about seven years. I got it um, just after I graduated high school. Um, as a, as a graduation present of sorts to myself. Um, and I used it, uh, throughout college and for the, uh, for a a good long while after graduating college. Um, 
And for a good portion of that time, about four years, I didn't uh, actually have a car. Um, so I, this was like my main, uh, commuting, uh, commuting vehicle. And I really re-architected my life around where I could reach comfortably with this bike. Um, and so I have a real fondness and soft spot for it. I also, um, put it through a lot (laughs) in that time, (laughs) um, because, you know, um, a lot of times, you know, especially as a, as a student, Um, and then as somebody early on in my career, um, you know, I, I needed this thing to work like all the time and, you know, I, I needed it to, I needed to rely on it for when I was, um, when I had to go into work and it was like, you know, 10 degrees below zero or something and mid blizzard, I was showing up to work when some of my colleagues in cars who lived quite a bit further away than I did were like, no, I'm staying home. I can't, I'm not, I'm not dealing with this. I was still, I was still showing up because, um, I lived close and I, I could rely on this thing to be there for me. Yeah. Um, but that said, it, you know, winter biking takes a lot of maintenance. And I know we'll probably cover that in a couple of different spots here. And, um, eventually when I no longer had a commute, um, I stopped bike commuting and started using it for mostly errands. Um, and then, uh, you know, just with a little bit of a more maintenance, it, I mean, it lasted a really long time, uh, before it met an untimely end. Uh, <laughs> when, when, uh, I left it out for a little bit too long, um, only connected by the, only connected to the frame, uh, locked up by the frame and somebody stole the tires, uh, which I guess I kind of have nobody to blame but myself for that, but, uh, it was still a bummer. <laughs> so technically you still have a Cirrus, just a wheelless one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not very, it's not very useful if you want to like, for example, go somewhere with it. But, <laughs> uh, if you want it to be kind of a, a conversation piece, it is 100%. Yeah. It's a, it, it, it really makes a statement in your living room. When I bought mine, I had been coming off of a mountain bike, which was like the, the very first major purchase of my life was this like $400 specialized hard rock. Um, yeah. that I got as like a sophomore in high school and and that thing um yeah also lasted me for quite a f- I think I had that for like eight years uh until it got stolen and then that's when I bought the Cirrus um so for me like walking into bicycle chain and looking around at all of these different like you know rows and rows of like very very serious looking very intimidating <laughs> like specialized road bikes I was like oh my god what am I doing um so at the time that I bought it like a hybrid was definitely what I was most comfortable with you know mm-hmm. um like drop bars were very intimidating um but then having like the 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 particular build that i bought had like bull horns on the ends of the flat bars Mm, Um, i remember that yeah and that was kind of like that's what helped me realize that my wrists especially on like long rides right um which is what i started doing more and more at you know now that i had this bike that like wasn't monopolizing all of my energy to like just make it go um you know i was able to like get out there and, and do longer rides um but like my i found i started finding that like my wrists wanted to be not you know flat on the flat bars but like rotated you know kind of in a more ergonomic natural position outside of you know on the outsides of the the bullhorns and i was like yeah. oh wait this is exactly what like drop bars have you do all the time maybe i should look into those <laughs> yeah. so it, it was it was definitely even though even though like um it ended up not being the you know the bike for me for like you know the next 20 years kind of thing it was definitely a good stepping stone towards figuring out what i what i need um you know know, on a long-term basis and i and i did ask like when i when i started thinking about drop bars and i and i asked at lower town bike shop like can we just put drop bars on this thing can we just convert it you know and they were like well the geometry you know wouldn't be quite right like it would have your your body would be in kind of a weird position uh if you put just put drop bars on it so i did end up just buying a whole new bike yeah yeah totally oh that's exciting i want to i want to hear about uh about your new bike too uh at some point i know we talked about it a little bit in well other that's channels. that's the next episode of second opinion so all right all right i'll be on my toes for that one follow us in your uh favorite podcast player uh to make sure that you hear all the new episodes as they come out 
Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is still like, this is the bike that I have put the most distance on. Um, I like, according to Strava, at least, uh, I've got like 13,200 kilometers, uh, which is about 8,270 miles, uh, on this bike. So, you know, even though I haven't used it in a year and a half, really, uh, it's, you know, I remember it quite well. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, totally. Yeah, I, I I can think back on some of the rides that you and I have had been on, and then also you know a lot of the stuff you told me about. Like that's that's really you know that's a that's a lot of time to spend uh, on on uh, on that bike. Uh, mm-hmm. that's, that's good stuff. I didn't put nearly that much. I uh, just in my three years of, of commuting, and a little bit of like very very light, very 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 light touring. Uh, I, uh, put about, uh, 2,667 kilometers, which is about 1600 miles, uh, on mine. Um, uh, but yeah, like you said, it's, it, for me, it is also the bike that I've spent the most time with for sure. Um, I got a road bike, um, a year and a half, two years ago, I think. Um, and I've been using that for longer rides now, but, um, the cargo capacity is basically nothing. Uh, right. <laughs> so I don't really, I don't really, um, it's interesting because it's changed. It's both changed how I um, how I ride, and also it kind of has changed with how I ride a little bit. Yeah. Because I because you know, admittedly now now that I have a car, I do you know fewer errand runs by bike, but I also do way more leisure runs by bike. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you know, meeting somebody for coffee or something like that. Um, fits a little bit more with that. And it, the road bike does allow me to cover more distance more quickly because um, I, I think it's just a, it's just a speedier, um, more aggressive way out. Um, yeah. But I, I still, like you said, I, I've spent a lot of time with that bike and I love it. I love it and I miss it. I miss when it had wheels. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad that you brought up like cargo capacity because that's, you know, si- like similar to the way that a hybrid bike is kind of halfway in between like the geometry of a road bike and, you know, a, a mountain bike. Um, it also like, I, at least for the Cirrus, it felt like it was kind of halfway in between, uh, you know, those two extremes in terms of like how much, like, like it's compatibility with different accessories and different cargo configurations and stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So like I didn't have any trouble getting like a rear cargo rack on it. It's perfectly set up for that. Um, when I got the pizza rack, which was is the front rack that I had on it for a long, long time, um, that p- did present m- more and more challenges that I kept encountering as time went on. Um, so it was like initially, it was like, oh wait, the the pizza rack needs to have this like bracket that attaches to the front of the fork. There's no hole in the front of this particular fork. That's probably not true for like every build of the the Cirrus, but like for my particular build with the carbon fiber fork, it didn't have a hole in the front. Yeah. So like the folks at Bicycle Chain had to like machine this like bracket with like three 90 degree angles to get it all the way from the hole at the back of the fork, underneath the fork, and then like to the front. And wow. And that worked, you know, that that was just fine for quite a while. Um, it just kind of pushed the, like, the fender down just a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then I discovered when winter came that, like, oh, wait, pushing the fender down a little bit actually does affect things when you put a studded tire on. Because mm-hmm. then the studded tire was rubbing up against the fender in a way that it had not, like, the previous winter when I didn't have the the pizza rack on. So mm-hmm. then it was like, okay, what do I do about that? I had to, like, chop off the front of the fender. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah. Um, there's also, like, uh, I, I feel like this bike could really stand to have, like, more, at least one more uh, mounting point for, like, water bottle cages. Yeah. Because um, it has just, like, two of them inside the triangle, which is fine, uh, you know. But then, like, the adhesives on the threading on one of them kind of failed on my bike. So then I was down to just one water bottle spot. And it's like, okay, now I have to decide whether I want to be able to put a water bottle there or my folding lock. Yeah. Right? And it's like, okay, if we if we had another one, another mounting point just, like, under the down tube, that would have been, like, that would have been just perfect for putting a folding lock under there. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I had much the same experience. I think like on the whole, I have found, you know, I think like you said, it's not true of every trim. I think there are some trims that are really conducive to this, but the one that I had, which I, th- which is, I think one notch below yours, it looks like the 2.0 now I used to call it the sport. I think it went, it went like base sport elite or something like that. Mm. Um, back in the day. Um, but, uh, yeah, I definitely, I think more mounting points, um, has been, a consistent thing that I've been a little bit disappointed by with the whole specialized lineup. I get it. Um, because I think like, you know, probably they want you to pay for it. <laughs> right. Uh, they want, but, um, I think generally speaking, that's been a, uh, a, a thing I've run into with a lot of different, um, products on multiple lines. Um, yeah. So. And I, and I feel like, you know, somebody who's like looking for like a $650 bike probably isn't going to be getting too deep in the weeds of like, okay, how many different water bottle mounting points right. do I need? You know? And like a lot of people don't even realize that there's like, Oh, I've got a mounting point underneath my down tube. Like nobody even yeah. looks down there. <laughs> right. 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 But we want it. <laughs> yep. Yep. Just you and me. Um, I also noticed like that it doesn't have uh, a standard like head tube cap That's in right. the cockpit area. So like when I started looking around at like um, different phone mounts, you know, I was like really intrigued by the ones that like mounted just underneath the the head tube cap um, instead of like clamping onto your handlebars. But I wasn't able to try those out when I had the Cirrus because uh, it just doesn't have a head tube cap at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Right. So yeah, it's just like it's just like those little details that make it like you know, just just not quite compatible with like all the broad range of different kinds of um, accessories that you might want to put on your bike, yeah. Um, and yeah, like it's definitely it's definitely more geared towards like road tires, uh, in terms of like how much clearance they give you in the fork, mm-hmm. you know, because like I mentioned, like like if 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 the if there was more clearance between the fork and the the tire like then i would never have had a problem with like the fenders rubbing um right. but yeah here we are <laughs> um my build also had like some very they looked very sporty but they had like these like deep dish rimmed wheels wow um, yeah so i i don't know enough about like we like different types of wheels and you know are they like double walled or triple walled or whatever the hell those you know those words are vocabulary yeah. um but it you know it it they they seemed like they were meant for me to be going fast right um but what i what i experienced as well is that like uh they they made it more difficult to like swap out the tires when i got a flat it was mm-hmm. just like it took a lot of effort to like you know get the tire lever in there and and get those tires off, um, and then also like rebeating the tire onto the wheel. Like it was like I man gave me quite the thumb workout. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I think I started like like when I had to do that in the winter a few times. You know, the air is like drier, yeah. and so you're like you're you're manipulating all this rubber, and like my my thumbs like started to like crack and bleed a little bit a couple of times, oh, wow. <laughs> which was unfortunate. Um, so yeah, just like little, little things like that where it's like, okay, I understand, um, you know, why they put this on because it, it does make the bike, you know, I'm sure that it like reduces the rolling resistance and you can go faster on this, on this bike. Um, but it kind of, you know, it's at the, at the expense of like practicality, um, which as it turns out is like a thing that I'm looking for in my bike. (laughs) I'm a, I'm a supremely practical person. Right, right, right. No, I, I don't think I had that particular situation. I think mine had more like conventionally thick wheels. Yeah. Um, but definitely the same thing in ter- in terms of tire, uh, tire choice. I basically had to pick, you know, closer to road bike tires in almost every situation. I think the stock tires that came on it were kind of road bike thickness, mm-hmm. but kind of nubbier, almost like you know, definitely, definitely made for it, made for a hybrid. Yeah. Um, but any, any time I went for, I think I had to replace the tires once, maybe twice, uh, tires and tubes. And when I did, it was basically like, oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm back to road tires easily, easily back to road tires. No, no contest. Um, cause nothing else will really quite fit, especially if you have fenders on there. 
which right. for a while I didn't. And uh, then I learned why you need fenders uh, <laughs> after, after winter. So anyway, um, yeah, I think, I think definitely. And when I took it in for repairs too, I kept hearing um, some kind of idiosyncrasies from a repair perspective too. That might've been specific to my model year, but I think, yeah, definitely there's some interesting design choices okay. that impact the practicality of it and impact the repairability of it from, from what I've heard. But hopefully that's, hopefully that's, specific to the 2013 model um yeah hopefully <laughs> uh but you know it's they've had a lot of time to rethink things and i remember i remember when i saw your your bike joy for the first time i think we were, we were meeting up in downtown minneapolis mm -hmm. um i was like no way that's not the that's not like we've got right. the same bike here but that's not the same bike <laughs> that's like 10 times cooler than my bike um but yeah, no, that's, I mean, it's, uh, they're, they're good, reliable machines. They are. Um, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wonder, cause I mean, you mentioned that like the, the stock tires were a little bit knobbier than you would like. And I always wonder if that's a thing that they put on, you know, like, like kind of a mid range price point bikes. Like, I wonder if they put knobbier tires on those ones more often because it makes folks who are novices more it like puts them more at ease about like oh i'm not going to just fall over if i ever hit you know a couple of like grains of sand mm -hmm. on the road you know or something like that <laughs> yeah yeah no that's a great point because you'll never you'll never guess i uh the last time i took that out for a ride was with a fr friend of the show and uh uh fellow nexus host brian mitchell uh we were over um across from where i live in boom island park uh and there's a little bit of gravel for like mm. maybe I don't know, a third of a mile on the stretch of Boom Island. And I hit that with my bike and the and the slick tires. And I was like, uh uh, I cannot match your speed there, dude. I can't do it. He's got, yeah, he's got thicker, closer to mountain bike tires. I'm like, I'm gonna fall over. Uh and I didn't, but I was very timid and he was like fearless. But yeah, that's Brian for you. <laughs> and I think I think he actually recently replaced those tires. I think he's got slicker ones now. Oh yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. It was like last week or a couple weeks ago that he'd done that. That's right. Mm -hmm. Punctures, they'll find us all eventually. So yeah, like I, I mentioned that I I don't have this bike anymore. Um and the reason that I sold mine, there were kind of a couple couple reasons. Um number one is that I, I realized that I really wanted to have like a separate like at least two separate bikes for winter and summer. Uh, because prior to that, like all the way from 2018 through uh, early 2020, right? Like this was my one and only bike and I rode it all year round, any, like no matter what the conditions were. Um, like you mentioned, yeah, there were quite a few times where my coworkers in cars were like, my car won't start. Or like, it's the roads are too bad between here and Hudson, Wisconsin. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going five miles. Screw you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> five um, miles in the cold, in the yeah. blizzard, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, dodging, uh, dodging people and, you know, all wheel drive SUVs <laughs> slipping and sliding. Yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, so, so I, I knew that I wanted to have separate, like a separate winter bike, mostly because like having to replace three chains every winter was getting to be like, it was just like, wow, this is expensive. Um, and so uh, if you'll recall, we had uh, an extra dimension episode uh, where, where I had Crystal Sersley on from Lower Town Bike Shop. And yeah, she was recommending that like, oh yeah, if you want to ride through the winter, you should probably have like either a single speed or like a, a belt drive instead of a chain drive. Um, so, so yeah, like I knew that the Cirrus wasn't going to be my winter bike because, you know, it's like, it's just not set up for that. Right. You know, with a, th a two by nine uh, drivetrain, it's like, okay, I'm not going to convert that to a single speed and like whip around on this thing. Um, so, so then, you know, the, it became, okay, do, do I want this to be my summer bike? Um, and like I mentioned, like, I, I was simultaneously kind of going on longer, longer rides. And like I had, I had, I ended up like blowing my knees out, uh, riding this thing on, you know, a bike tour just down to like Mankato and then up to Red Wing and then back up to St. Paul, you know, mm. which was like a nice, I just did that, like a leisurely four day, you know, kind of over spring break camping <laughs> trip and, and, you know, coming home, like I blew my knees out and, um, and I decided like, okay, this isn't quite the right 
the right bike for that. Um, so I, I inquired about like touring bikes and longer distance bikes, and I ended up buying um, the Marin Four Corners to to be my like summer bike slash touring bike. And um, I'll be reviewing that in the next episode of Second Opinion here. Um, but yeah, so, so, so then I ended up like, okay, what do I do with the Cirrus? Oh, my brother just came back from Peace Corps because the coronavirus forced you know them to evacuate everybody from all of the countries that they had everybody in peace corps at um and so he came home and just like you know got a job at target again and he needed to be able to commute but he didn't want to like take the train because we're in the middle of a pandemic as well so like okay he needs a bike i sold him my bike nice. and, it was per- and it was perfect timing yeah good that it didn't it didn't go too far <laughs> no yeah and and i do like now that he's he's out of town now um and so like when I got back from my race a, a few weeks ago and, and put the four corners into the shop for some like, you know, much needed tender loving care, uh, I, I borrowed his bike, which, you know, used to be my bike for a, a few days. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, like I, like riding around this bike again, I was like, man, this thing is so light. I can just like, wow, I could just whip around and it's great. <laughs> nice. It's a fun That's ride awesome. still. Just not quite the right one for for my life. Yeah. No, I get you. I get you. Yeah. Uh, well, I already covered how uh, how mine ended up. It's hanging out um, in in my apartment right now, mm-hmm. pending new wheels or uh, or a new uh, 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 a new objective. Um, so yeah, but definitely, like you said, you know, um, it's it's still they're really fun bikes to ride around on, and they're I think they're great. Kind of, I f- I found it great for what I what I got it for. Um, you know, it lasted me a, a good long while of some pretty heavy use from, from, uh, scaled to my perspective, at least. <laughs> uh, and I know, uh, um, like you said, I think, I think it's a good bike to figure out what you actually want in a bike longer term. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's kind of the, the, like Jack of all trades, master of none. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely, definitely a good choice for folks who are looking for like, like an occasional um recreational bike you know and and don't really need to get too deep into the specifics of like any particular aspect of the bike Mm. but once yeah once you really start digging into like okay like i want to maximize my cargo capacity or i want to maximize my speed or you know whatever like you're you're going to find other things that are going to be good at any one of those particular things um but it's yeah, it's a good it's a it's a it's a middle ground. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. And I think um, yeah, that's the other thing too is I probably you know I'd probably get another one you know if I if I had the chance mm. to to go back at the same at the you know flip back around at the same you know same time I'd make that same decision I think. Um, yeah. Very nice. So Brandon, uh, why don't you tell people where where they can find you on the internet? Yeah, well, you can find me on Strava. I'll put links to our profiles in the show notes. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, you can also find me on Twitter where I'm Brandon MN, Brandon underscore MN. And on the internet where I'm Brandon dot MN. You can go to that domain name and find some more information about me. How about you, Ian? Where can we find you on the internet? Uh, so I mostly uh, hang out on Twitter. Um, I'm Ian R. Buck on Twitter. And um, yeah, also if you want to like see all my grocery runs and whatnot, uh, you can see me on Strava as well. <laughs> Nice. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm also a co-host of PodKit. You can hear me on PodKit, where I'm almost as forgetful as I am here. Maybe more, <laughs> depending on the situation. I might have forgot how forgetful I am. Yes. PodKit, one of the other wonderful shows that we've got on this network. Yes, indeed. Uh, so this episode of Second Opinion is released under a Creative Commons attribution license. So feel free to use any part of it as you see fit, as long as you link back to the original page, which once again is thenexus.tv slash SO116. If you would like to discuss this episode with other listeners, you can do so on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash thenexustv. And if you would like to support us financially as we make technology-focused podcasts, you can uh, find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash TV. Until next time, have a good one. Have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. convergence. Technology is ever-evolving. 
It touches every part of our lives, both influencing and being influenced by society. I'm Ian Arbuck, and I know it's hard to stay on top of everything you need to know to live in this digital world. That's why every month on The Extra Dimension, we explore a different aspect of the technological convergence. Find it on our website, thenexus.tv, or by searching for The Extra Dimension in your favorite podcast player.